In this video, what we are going to do is find the Taylor series for the function f of x equals natural log of 1 plus x centered at x equals 0. We're doing this computation with the assumption that this function has a power series representation, and it does. In fact, there are other ways that you could get to the power series for this function. We're going to focus here on calculating the Taylor coefficients. So what are those coefficients? Well, the coefficient c sub n for our power series expansion for this function written as a Taylor coefficient, this is going to be the nth derivative of the function evaluated at the center, x equals 0, divided by n factorial. What we are going to do is take our function, f of x equals natural log of 1 plus x, and I want to start by just computing these derivatives. So I'm going to write f prime, f double prime, until we see a pattern that we can describe in terms of the general index n. So we'll differentiate plug in x equals 0, differentiate plug in x equals 0, until we have an understanding of what this numerator should look like for a general index. Then we will divide by n factorial, and at that point, we will be able to write down our Taylor series. OK, so the first one corresponding to n equals 0 is actually just the function itself. So f of x is natural log of 1 plus x. To the right, let me plug in the center x equals 0. f of 0 is natural log of 1, that's 0. So actually, there will be no c sub 0 constant term. Take the first derivative. It's going to be 1 over 1 plus x. And that's a fine thing to write down. But what will happen is actually, I think it's a little easier to spot the future pattern if I write this as 1 plus x to the negative 1. OK, so that's 1 over 1 plus x. Let's plug in x equals 0. 1 plus 0 is going to give us 1. 1 to the negative 1 is 1. So the first derivative of f evaluated at 0 is 1. Take the second derivative with the power rule. That's going to be negative 1 times 1 plus x to the negative 2. When I plug in x equals 0, again, this whole part here becomes 1. So 1 plus 0 squared, 1 over that. So we're left with just negative 1. OK, let's keep going a couple more times. So let's take the third derivative. The negative 2 will drop down. So one thing we observe is we're starting to switch signs. So this is going to be an alternating series. I want to write 2 times 1 rather than just 2. And the reason for that is sometimes it's easier to spot patterns if you don't combine terms. So I'll mention that again on the next line. If we plug in 0 to this, we're left with the third derivative of f evaluated at x equals 0 is positive 2 times 1. OK, that's just 2, but I'm going to write 2 times 1. Let's take the fourth derivative. The negative 3 will drop down, so we flip signs again. And now this coefficient in front is going to be negative 3 times 2 times 1. And at that point, I think it's clear what's happening with the power rule. So this is negative 3 times 2 times 1, 1 plus x to the negative 4, which means that when I plug in x equals 0, the fourth derivative of this function evaluated at 0 is negative 3 times 2 times 1. OK, I think that's enough. But if you don't see it, you can always take another derivative or two. What's happening here is every time we pull down a power to get to the next derivative, we pick up another factor in front that goes up by 1. So this is a factorial expression. In particular, this is negative 3 factorial. This is positive 2 factorial. This we could think of as negative 1 factorial. This is um, also 1 factorial. We call it 0 factorial. And then this term will just get rid of that. All right, so let's set up our Taylor coefficient. c sub n is going to be the nth derivative of f evaluated at 0. Following the pattern here, the factorial expression we have is one lower than the, the level of derivative that we took. So from 4 to 3, from 3 to 2, from 2 to 1, 1 to 0. So we should write negative 1 to the 
I'll say that in a second. I just want to stick with my factorial expression while I have it. N minus one factorial. Okay, let's readdress now this alternating signs. Notice the even derivatives are the ones which are negative, and the odd derivatives are the ones which are positive. So I'm going to use n plus 1 to get the right sign. You could also do n minus 1. That covers the numerator for our Taylor coefficient. We are going to divide out by n factorial. Don't forget that. Sometimes I do. n minus 1 factorial over n factorial simplifies since n factorial is the same thing as n times n minus 1 factorial. So the Taylor coefficients for natural log of 1 plus x centered at x equals 0 look like overall just negative 1 to the n plus 1 divided by just n. The factorials canceled out. Now we can write down our Taylor series expression for natural log of 1 plus x then we will compute the radius and interval of convergence. So where is this valid? Okay, so natural log of 1 plus x is going to be the sum. Let me address this lower index in a second. I want to stick with this for now. So the coefficient is negative 1 to the n plus 1. This is an alternating series divided by n. x minus 0 to the n. So we will write x to the n. You always want to be careful that you don't have a denominator of zero when you write these kinds of expressions. Were I to plug in n equals zero, we would have a zero denominator. But notice that we don't have a c sub zero term. We really start with n equals one. So here is the Taylor series for natural log of one plus x centered at uh, x equals zero. Let me step aside for a second so you can catch up with any of this, and then I will come back and we will do the radius and interval of convergence. To find the radius of convergence, let's use the ratio test. I'll just stick with the regular ratio test. So we can take the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 2 x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 times the reciprocal of the term with the index n. So that's going to be n divided by negative 1 to the n plus 1 x to the n. Okay. I wrote the negative 1 expressions, but you don't need to because we're taking an absolute value and they won't end up mattering. So if I write this one more time, this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1 times x. As n goes to infinity, this ratio goes to 1. So this is the absolute value of x. We want this less than 1. So this tells us that the radius of convergence for this power series is 1. That means that we converge between x equals negative 1 and 1, but let's also analyze the endpoints. One endpoint is immediate. If I put in negative 1 for x, we would be trying to take natural log of 0. That doesn't even exist. There's no reason here to discuss the convergence at x equals negative 1 because this function isn't defined when x equals negative 1. So absolutely no way that we are going to have convergence when x is negative 1. Let me go ahead and write parentheses for that. For x equals 1, however, we're looking at natural log of 2. Uh, that's in the domain of natural log. So let's check what this series looks like when x equals 1. We have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1 over n times 1 to the n, so that's just going to be 1. This converges by the alternating series test. It's like a version of the alternating harmonic series, and in fact, this alternating harmonic series expression here adds up to the natural log of 2. So we do have convergence 
at the right endpoint when x equals 1. That's it for this lesson. I'm going to step aside now and leave you with a visualization of this function together with the first few Taylor polynomials, meaning the first few partial sums for this series. Notice what's happening here with the domain. So you will we'll have a vertical asymptote where x is negative 1. You will see convergence when x equals 1, but you will not see convergence beyond that.